Greetings, Brother Nicholas Gale. Welcome, sir. Sister Kine Case, small. Welcome. God bless you. Sister Rebecca Lewis from Canada. God bless you. It's good to have you in our Bible studies tonight. Praise God. God bless you, Sister Paulette Miko coming in from USA. God bless you, Sister Marcia Simpson. Greetings. God bless you all. Good to see you on tonight. It's been quite a while. God. Sister Marcia Edwards, welcome. God bless you. Brother Richard Carnegie, Lord bless you, sir. Good to see you. Sister Shaniel Baker, God bless you and welcome. Welcome to this Bible study tonight. It's been a while, as I said before. But we're grateful for the privilege to be able to be here tonight. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Just waiting on a few more persons to join, then we will get started. All right, let me just see something here. Um, okay. Hey, greetings, Brother Dennis, coming in from Canada. God bless you, Sister Barbara. God bless you, Sister Jean, Sister Fairweather. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you richly. Now, um, I think we're going to get started. Now it's five minutes past the time we should have started, 7.30. So let us say a big welcome again to this um, Wednesday night Bible study. We have been off air for Bible study for some weeks now because of the fact that we, well, we were, we were streaming from the assembly for some of the nights, but we have, we, we have not been streaming for the past, I think it's two weeks, and so, in light of the fact that the curfew hours has changed, we are now back streaming until, but I'm streaming from home until we can um, go back into the sanctuary for Bible studies and prayer meeting in the evenings. Of course, we are grateful that we still can have our Sunday morning worship services and uh, with the same numbers that we have been having in the past few months. No. Um, changes to that. 
So we give God thanks for that. We just need to continue ensuring that we are observing the necessary protocols that have been put in place by the government as it relates to the COVID-19 um, disease to prevent it from spread. So we give God thanks for this privilege to be able to still gather in the sanctuary for regular services. Now, um, I just want us to pray and ask God's blessings on this service tonight, this lesson that um, His will will be done, His will will be accomplished after all is said and done. So let's just join in prayer. Where you are, just pray with me. Um, just feel free to pray aloud at your home or wherever as we ask God's direction right now. Everybody join together in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your love. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. Surely, God, we can say without any reservation that great is your faithfulness. We can say without any reservation, Lord, that your love is amazing, it's wonderful. And so, God, tonight we are grateful for the experiences we have had with you, where we have experienced the joy that there is to be found in serving you. We have experienced a peace that only you can give, God, that peace which passes all understanding. In the midst of a world that is filled with turmoil and chaos, we can still have peace in our hearts because that peace which we find in our hearts, God, is not of the world. It's not the world couldn't have given it to us. And so we're grateful tonight, Lord. It's not because of the things we possess that brings us peace, God, but it's just because of the assurance we have to know that you're on our side and you cares for us. You watches over us, God. We are grateful. We are grateful. And so tonight, God, as we come together another night to look into your words, we pray, God Almighty, for revelation. We pray for increased wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your words. And that, God Almighty, each and every one of us will be challenged, oh God, to apply your words to our lives as we live from day to day. Oh God, in the midst of this world, oh God, where things are going in all different ways, God, that is contrary to what we would have loved it to be like. But God, you're still in charge. You're still the one who sits high and looks low. You still reign in the affairs of men, and we are grateful tonight. So, Lord, we seek for your direction. We seek for your guidance. Lord, we are depending on you tonight to go with us through this Bible study and grant wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, God. Oh, God Almighty, give to the hearers tonight, God, those who are watching and listening, receptive hearts to your words. Lord, I surrender my entire being to you, God, for you to use for your glory. Let thy will be done now, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, I will say thanks and amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So tonight, we want to continue the lesson we started last week in the sanctuary. But for the benefit of those who were not privileged to be in the sanctuary last week, nor and the fact that we did not stream the service, I think I want to do a quick recap um, on what we went through last week, and then we'll see how far we go into the lesson tonight, God willing. Praise God. So, we started looking on the, 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 the serious matter, very, a, a very pertinent matter, especially in this season in which we are living in. Are you ready? Are you prepared for the life to come? Are you prepared for what will happen after you cease to exist on this earth in this form? Are you prepared to live with God? Or what, what, what kind of destiny, what kind of eternal destiny are you prepared for tonight? The fact is that from your, every one of us that were born, we can't escape a journey that is set before us. We have a journey to, 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 to take that will lead us into eternity. But what we do on this side of life, while we... We are conscious of the world around us while we are conscious of ourselves, while we are conscious that there is a God to be served, while we are conscious that there is an evil force that, that represents Satan and his imps in the world at work today. While we are conscious of these things, what decisions are we making to ensure that we are ready for an eternal destiny that will, have, after all, would have profited, profited us being in existence in any way? Because the fact of the matter is, brothers and sisters, as long as we're born into this world, we will spend eternity 
in one of two places. It will either be an eternity that is unto damnation, where you will spend eternity with Satan and the wicked people of this world in a, in a lake of fire, because death and hell shall be cast in the lake of fire. Or you, you could be spending an eternity with the eternal Father, God himself, Jesus. So we have that two options before us. And we must, not we must understand that and should not take it for granted that we can just live any and any way and live according to how we feel we should do things and make it into an eternity with Jesus Christ. No. For us to live eternally with Jesus Christ, there's got to be some preparation that we've got to go through on this side of life for us to inherit eternal life. And so the big question I'm asking tonight, are you ready? Are you prepared for your journey into eternity? If you should die tonight, where, what journey would you have, what would you be embarked upon? Where will you go? Is it into an eternal, eternal damnation or is it an eternity with Jesus Christ? Very pertinent question for us to ponder tonight and not only ponder but we should make sure and I, I, I have no doubt everybody knows the answer to the question if you ask yourself that question we all can answer that because we know the state of our souls we know where we stand with God tonight and depending on where we stand if it is well with our souls then we can have an assurance that our journey will be a worthwhile one because we'll be going into an eternity with Jesus Christ. But if there's any sin at all in our lives tonight, we know that if we should die in that state, that that eternal journey, that journey into eternity, is not going to be a nice one for us. And so, we, but the good thing about it is that we have an opportunity tonight. We have a perfect opportunity to make it right. We have the opportunity to set ourselves right set our houses in order so that when that time comes it will be well with us and we'll move we'll transition from this life into an eternal life with jesus christ a place of peace and paradise after all it would not have been worth us living if that's not our eternal end if we, if we don't end up being with jesus christ our life on earth would not have been worth living and so that's the question i'm asking tonight are you prepared for your journey? Are you prepared? Are you ready? How, how is it with you? Yeah, we, we, have, we have been going to church for many years. We have been hearing that Jesus is coming. But how is it with our souls? Are we ready? And the fact is, we have been living in a time when so much focus has been placed on the fact that Jesus is coming. And it's, a, it's absolutely true that he's coming. And it's coming is imminent. We just don't know when. It could be any time. But in my mind, I think that for all of us as human beings who are alive today, there's possibly something that is more, even more imminent than the rapture for us, and that is death. Because it is appointed unto man once to die. Once you're born of a woman, you're going to die. So, death is certain. But the time of death is uncertain. We just don't know when. It's an imminent thing for every person that is upon the earth. Because we just don't know when. And therefore, even beyond just preparing for the rapture, because we just don't know when that's going to be either, we should be even more concerned about preparing for death when we shall die. Because of the fact that it can happen anytime. Anytime. I lost a core to one of my technicians on Monday. He turned up for work Monday morning, was assigned, dispatch, went on his duties, got his activities completed, was returning to the office at a, a minute after four, and his, his, uh, his vehicle skidded, and he ended up dead. Accident, simple accident. It wasn't no big thing. When you look on the, on the vehicle, you'd never believe that somebody died in a vehicle like that. But the fact of the matter is, he lived his life, was going through his day normally. Completed his task, heading back to the office to do what he needs to do at the office and then go home.
to his children. He had three young boys, just a 41-year-old man. He did not have no clue that he would, when he left his house Monday morning, he would not return. But that is how life is. And hence the reason for us to be ready, for us to be prepared for the life after this life. We, we must be prepared for our journey into eternity. We cannot take that for granted. Whatever it takes, brothers and sisters, we ought to make sure that we do all that is within our power to make sure that we are ready to meet our maker. Ready, ready, ready. Praise God. So now, I just want us to start by looking at um, 1 John 5, verse 13. I just want to read that scripture and just emphasize on one little phrase in it. Um, 1 John 5, verse 13, where it says that these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So you can know that you have eternal life. It's not something that you have to guess about. You can know with all surety and certainty tonight if you are ready to inherit eternal life or not. It's something that you may know. The Bible said that he may know that he have eternal life. He have written unto you that, that those that believe on Jesus that you might know. It's not something you're not guessing if you have it. You're not wondering if you're having it. You're not supposing, but you know you can be at that state tonight. Every one of us can find ourselves at that place where we don't have to second guess. If the rapture to take place or if we should die, we shall inherit eternal, eternal life. Because the Bible tells us how to. So if we apply what the Bible says to our lives, we can be certain of it. God is not a man that he should lie. He will never go back on his words. What he says is yea and amen in Christ. It is a, it's a fact. It's a reality. It's a must. Whatever he says. And so we, we can know it. Excuse me. We can know of a certainty where we stand if we are ready for our journey into our eternal journey, our journey into eternity. So, let me ask a question. If you were to die tonight, would you know for certain that you would be with God in eternity? It are with God eternally. Serious question, that you know. Because that's not something that we should be guessing about or ifing about. Would you know for certain that if you should die tonight, you'd be with God eternally? That's a big question I want you to ponder on. I remember the Bible tells us in, the, in this scripture just read, 1 John 5 verse 13, that we can know, we can know if we will be with God eternally, if we should die tonight. Now, if it is possible for us to know the answer to that question, then I certainly would want to know it. Wouldn't you want to know the answer to the question? Is it possible, if it's possible for you to know the answer, wouldn't you want to know? I certainly would want to know. And I think I know the answer to that question. For me, praise God. And so, tonight, what I want us to, I want us to look into the Bible and see what the Bible says about how we can receive eternal life. Because if the Bible tells us that we can know that we have it, then it also gives us the, 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 the process that we, can, we must go through to obtain eternal life. So, and it's only after we have gone through that process and we are maintaining a walk with God that we can have that surety that we are ready, we are prepared for our eternal destiny, for our eternal journey, or for our journey into eternity. So we know, we can know, and the Bible tells us how. But before we even look further into the Bible, let me ask another question. I asked the Virginia Church last week this question also. I asked the question, if you should go before Jesus tonight, if you should come before Jesus tonight, 
Just saying. And it should ask you the question, why should I let you into heaven? How would you answer him? Think about it. He's asking a question, why should he allow you to go into heaven? How would you answer that question? Perhaps possibly some of you would say, well, Jesus, I've been faithful in attending church. I attended church regularly while I was on earth. Some might say, I was a good moral person. I, 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 I had good moral standards. I upheld good moral standards. I didn't cheat. I didn't do the wrongs so that, that many other persons are doing. I didn't involve in wickedness and things that are contrary to good moral principles and guidelines. Some might even say, I was a good neighbor to my neighbors. I didn't cause my neighbors any chaos or any trouble. All these things. But if these answers would imply in my mind an understanding that salvation is earned. So if these are the things you say, then you're trying to say, well, you'd have earned the right to enter into heaven. So salvation would, be, would have been earned based upon what you have done. But understand this. Eternal life is not something you can work for, you can earn. You can, it's of nothing for you. It's not you. None of us can do that. Can, can work for it. But the Bible, the, the good news, the gospel of the Bible, it tells us that eternal life is a gift. It's something that is given to us by God himself. Praise God. Romans 6.23 tells us that the gift of God is eternal life. What it says? It says, for the wages of sin is death. But what? The gift of God God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, so this eternal life we, that, we, that we can know if we have, it is a gift from God. It's not something that you can just do good or just work your way and achieve it. It's God who gives it. But every gift that God has, there are principles that governs the receiver, the receiver or you receiving that gift. So even though eternal life is a free gift from God, there are principles that God has given that you must apply these principles to your life for you to achieve and obtain this gift of eternal life. Praise God. It's a gift. It's not something that we can earn or deserve. Remember that. Eternal life. So, the, the, the other question I want to ask why is eternal life a gift? Think about it. Why is it a gift? Why is that something that you, 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 you work for? Or something that you work after you have accomplished X amount of work, you can say, well, I deserve it. Because I've done this, I've done that, I've worked that. No. Why is it a gift? Very important question. So, to answer this important question, we, must, we realize that the answer for it lies in understanding man's problem with sin. If we're going to understand why is eternal life a gift, we have to understand why is it that man needs it. Why, 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 why? We have to understand the problem of sin that man possess. And when you realize that, that, that man has a sin problem, then you realize that man can't work to save himself. Man can't work to give himself this gift. It is God who in his, in his um, sovereignty and out of his mercy and love has got to give this to man because we are so depraved we can't even begin to work for it praise God so if we are going to understand brothers and sisters and friends the question to why is eternal life a gift we must first understand the problem that man has with sin, this big sin problem and so we have to look at the fact that we need grace we have to look at the need of grace and that's all I want to look at now. So the Bible teaches us, brothers and sisters, that all have sinned. Not just some of us, but all of us. Doesn't matter what your, your, your status in life is. Doesn't matter how long you have been saved. Doesn't matter how much titles or, 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 or accolades have been bestowed upon you as a bishop, a pastor, minister, brother, sister, whatever it is. All of us have sinned. 
The Bible tells us that. And the Bible is the true word of God and God cannot lie. Brothers and sisters, we must understand that what God says, it has to be so. Because if God could lie, he would cease. If God had ever lied, he would cease to God. And it is impossible for God to lie. God has got to be true to his word. Because the whole world, the universe is held by the word of God. So the day God ceased to be true to his word, the entire universe will be in chaos. Praise God. So we must understand that, that God's word tells us that every man I have sinned. Sin is what is sin. Sin is the violating of the law of God. So every man can has violated the law of God at some point in your life. So all have sinned. First John 3, first John 3, verse 4. What it says? It says, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law, the commandments of God, the words of God. Sin is a transgression of it. And once we have transgressed it, we have sinned. That is what sin is, the violating of the law of God. Sin is also failing to do what is right. So when you know what is right and you refuse to do it, you fail to do it, you have sinned. The Bible tells us in first John, in not first John, but in James 4, verse 17, that therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So if you know to do good and you don't do it, you have sinned, according to the word of God. So everyone, everyone has sinned in some way, shape, or form. That's what Romans 3 23 tells us. Romans 23 3 verse 23 tells us that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In other words, all have sinned and have come short of the approval, that word glory, the approval of God at some point in our lives. Praise God. So man needs grace. We need favor. We need that unmerited favor for us to, 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 to obtain eternal life. Because of our state, our sinful, depraved state, we need a hand to be reached out to us. A hand of favor that only God can do for us. Amen? And now the Bible describes the, the, the consequences of sin. So man is in a, has a sin problem and there are consequences to sin. Praise God. For the Bible says the, the, the wage of sin is death. That's what it says in the, in the scripture we read in Romans 6 verse 23. For the wage of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. So one of the consequences of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. What kind of death is the Bible speaking of here? Understand this brothers and sisters. There are three categories of death so to speak. There's physical death. Which is what the person experiences when, when the breath leaves the body. And you no longer can breathe, you no longer can move, you no longer is conscious of the world around you. You are now physically dead. That, and that, at that point, your, your spirit goes back to God. Your soul goes either to paradise or to show to hell, awaiting the resurrection. When you shall be either raptured to go to heaven with Jesus Christ or you shall be resurrected unto damnation at right, right through judgment. And then the body goes back to the dust of the earth. That is what happens when you experience physical death. So there's physical death and then there's spiritual death. Spiritual death, and many persons are spiritually dead today. Even though you're physically alive, you're spiritually dead because you're not connected to God. You are disconnected from God. You're not in a relationship with God. He's not in you and you're not abiding in his word. There's not a relationship. There's no, no spiritual connection with you and God. You are spiritually dead. Thousands, millions of persons are in that state today. Billions of persons have already died a physical death in that state. And that's a sad thing to happen. And then after, then you have, so you have physical death and you have spiritual death, which is a separation 
from you and God. There's no relationship between you and God. There's no, no fellowship. You're not connected. You're, God is not having a relationship with you because you kind of, light kind of fellowship with darkness. There's no fellowship with darkness and light. If, if, if I should flip the switch off in this room tonight that I'm in, the entire place will be dark. But once I flip the switch on and the light bulb, bulbs come on, darkness disappear. They both cannot coexist. Darkness and light cannot coexist. So as long as you're in sin, you, are, you cannot have relationship with God. Because God is light. In him, in him there is no darkness. Praise God. So you are in a spiritually dead state. And then there, there's eternal death or damnation. Death unto damnation. Eternal death where you, you, you are no longer, you are cut off completely forever. Without the hope of even being reconciled to God. And that is the kind of death that sin pays. Sin, the wages of sin is death. That death is everlasting separation from God. Hallelujah. And brothers and sisters, the state that physical death catches you in, that is where you, you're going to remain for eternity. You cannot do nothing after you die physically to change your, 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 your destiny. You will not have a hope of, of being revived, re, re, being reborn, being born again unto righteousness. And that's why, brothers and sisters, we don't know when physical death will come to us. But we know that as long as we live and live long enough, it's going to happen. Therefore, if, if the fact that if at the, the, the state physical death catches you, you will no longer have a chance to do anything to, to secure salvation with God. It is important for us to be in a state of readiness before we die physically. That's why I'm asking the important question tonight. Are you ready for your eternal journey? For your journey to eternity? Are you prepared for it? And knowing that physical death can reach you tonight. And when that happens, you, you can't do nothing to change your destiny again. So we need, to look, we need to prepare and make sure that we escape everlasting separation from God. The wage that sin pays. And God provides a way for us to escape it. Praise God. So the Bible, look at this now. Let's read Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. Revelation 21 verse 8. It says, But the fearful, note this, now. I want you to really make a note of the scripture, underline these things. The fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, not some liars, not the, the one that would just look at petty lying. No, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, or in the lake which burneth with fire, the Bible says, and brimstone, which is the second death. That is a death that sin pays, second death, where you are cut off eternal eternally from God. There's no hope. Praise God. But look at it. Look at the people who will find themselves in this position. You can know if you're ready tonight or not. Because you see what the Bible says? The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the warmongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, liars. All of these people shall experience second death. The second death. They shall be cast into the lake of fire. Praise God. So who is the fearful the Bible speaks of here? Those who do not firmly and boldly maintain their professed principles. Christian principles. So you, 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 you say you're a Christian, but you only say it when you're at church. When you're at work, people don't even know. You don't boldly and firmly profess, defend it. You don't maintain it. You don't let people know without any doubt that you, you, you stand for Jesus Christ. 
You have accepted him as Lord and Savior. You walk everything. You have been directed by him. You are timid to let the world know. So you, you try to fit into the world when you're in their, their, their circle. And when you come to church, you try to fit into the church. No, no, no. You are fearful. You are classified as those who are fearful. Those who refuse to be bold about their maintaining their professed Christianity and their professed Christian principles. You can't put down your Christian principles to suit anybody or anything in the world. You can't do the on the table deal like the world do. You, everything must be above the, the table, must be open and must be transparent and must be clean and pure. If you're not living like that, then Bible classifies you as fearful. And if you continue to live like that, you're going to experience a second death. That's what the Bible just said. Praise God. So if you're fearful, if you're living that fearful life, then you know you're not ready. You're not ready. You're not prepared for that journey into eternity. And so forth. You've got to get rid of that. What you say, you must mean. If you're, if you're standing for Jesus, you must stand for him wherever, whatever. No matter what the world throws at you. Jesus will always defend those who stand for him. Jesus will always back you up. Even when you're the, you're the only one standing for truth, he will always vindicate you, brothers and sisters. You don't have to do nothing to try and fit into the world, to suit the world. No, be a light. Stop being fearful. If you're fearful, it is saying that you're not ready for your journey, brothers and sisters. Those, when the Bible speaks of those who are fearful, those who are afraid to avow or to declare or to acknowledge themselves as friends of God in a wicked world. If you are afraid to let the world know that you are a friend of God, you are fearful and the Bible says you shall have your part in the lake of fire. If you die of the rapture, catch in that state. Hallelujah. Help us God. We got to be ready. We got to be ready. We got to be ready. And so these people, the fearful, they stand in contrast with those who overcome and is given eternal life. We got to be overcomers. We got to learn how to overcome the obstacles the, 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 that the enemy will throw of us. We can't be fearful, brothers and sisters. Stand firmly, resolutely, boldly, and maintain your Christian principles no matter what is happening in your life don't don't give up on god job had the opportunity but job maintained his integrity job maintained his integrity he did not throw in the towel he, he, he stood for what he believed he, he didn't only say he was a child of god he, he, he let the world know and that's how we, we must stand and maintain that for which we, we profess praise god so that's a fearful the fearful are those, brothers and sisters, I'll say it again, who, who, who do not firmly and boldly maintain their professed Christian principles wherever they are. You can't be at school and just want to fit in with the world, the, the children of the world, because they are doing this, you want to feel like you are part of them, you want to feel fit in, fitted into their company. No, don't be afraid to be the one odd one out as long as you are standing. For the principles of God. You are required to do that. To be ready for the rapture. You are required to do that. To be ready to inherit eternal life. If you are not doing that. You run the risk of losing your soul. And being lost forever. There is nothing worth. You not be willing to defend the gospel for. There is nothing worth. You, you throwing your Christian principles. Under the rug. Because they don't want to be seen as a Christian. Nothing is worth it. It is, it is worth everything to stand up for Jesus Christ. And to be that one light that will shine in a dark world. It will be worth it all. The someone said, when we say Jesus, just one glimpse of his dear face. All the sorrows that we face now will be erased. So let us stand. Let us not be fearful. Let us stand firmly and boldly for the principles which we must uphold. Don't be fearful, brothers and sisters. The Bible says that the fearful will have their part in the lake of fire, which is the second death. That's what sin pays. It's fearful, to be fearful 
in this manner is not of God, it's of sin. Praise God. Look again what the Bible says. So it says the fearful, and then it says the unbelieving. They too will have their part in the lake of fire. So if you're an unbeliever tonight, you're not ready for your journey. You're not ready yet. When the Bible speaks of the unbelieving, it's speaking of those who have not, not true faith. They are infidels. Infidels at heart. They, they don't stand up truly for what they, they, they believe. There's no true faith in God. And all who have not the sincere faith of the gospel, according to what Mark 16, verse 16 speaks of, is category, category, categorized as unbelieving. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. If you are unbelieving, you shall be Find yourself, you shall have your part in the lake of fire, and therefore you're not ready for your journey tonight. So if you if you don't believe and be saved, and I'm gonna speak more about that belief as we go further in this because it's not just a math, it's just a, just not just a mental process. So you say, Yeah, I believe, but it's, it's believing to the point where you do what Jesus requires of you, it requires action. Faith without work is dead. You've got to do something. You can't just say you believe. But you believe what? And what have you done to show that you believe? So he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So you not only just believe and think you're saved. you got to baptize. you got to repent. you got to receive the Holy Ghost. There are some actions that there are some things that you must do to be saved. Praise God. And also the Bible says, so the, the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable. Mighty God. The abominable. The, 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 the verb form of this word which is derived from, from which this word abominable is derived it means to execute disgust mighty God to feel disgust at or to abominate or to abhor so those that Jesus feel God feels a great disgust at because of his state you're in sin and God can't can tolerate it and cannot, he cannot fellowship with it if you find yourself in that state, when you die, you shall have your part in the lake of fire. So the, the, the abominable the Bible speaks of, it refers to all who are detestable on account of their sins and all those who conduct, your conduct is offensive to God. So if you are doing things that are offensive to God, you are classified as a being in an abominable state and you shall find yourself in the lake of fire. So therefore you are not ready tonight. You are not prepared. And so you can get ready tonight. Stop being offensive to God in your conduct. The man who sin is offensive to God. The Bible tells us in Psalms that God is angry every day with the wicked. Not just someday, but every day. The man who continues to offend God Who's kind of continues to offend God? God is angry with such a man every day. And you don't want to find yourself in that position. If you are in that position, you are not ready for that journey. So, thus, it would, this word abominable would now include those who live in open sin. You just talk about sinning. You are in an abominable state and therefore not ready. And many Christians find themselves in this. They just sin every day, you get up the sin. You know, you say you've been born again, but you just sin, 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 open the sin. You blatantly until disregard biblical instructions. You blatantly until you disregard the, 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 the guidance of your leaders, spiritual leaders. You don't obey the rules. You're living, you're, open, you're just sinning openly. And therefore, your, your, your conduct this is this detestable to God. And so you are classified in the abominable. Hello, brothers and sisters. It's time for us to be ready. Nothing is worth not being ready. You not being ready. Be ready. Those who practice detestable vices or, 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 or acts, they are not ready for their journey to eternity. Those who conduct excites disgust and hatred. So the things you do, the, your actions, your conduct, it excites disgust and hatred. You're not ready 
You're not ready if you find yourself in that position. And you are classified under the abominable that the Bible speaks of that shall have the, the part in the lake of fire. The Bible also says not only the fearful, not only the abominable, not only the unbelieving, but it said murderers, all murderers, those who, who take human beings' life with premeditated malice. So you, you thought about it and you, you just think, hey, I got to get rid of this person. Those murderers shall find themselves in the lake of fire. It also refers, not only when they commit physical murder like that, but it also refers to those who hate their brothers in their heart. God Bible tells us, if you hate your brother, you have to commit murder. Did you know? know that? So if you go to church every Sunday like all of us, most of us do, go to Bible studies and prayer meeting like most of us do, but we still hate our brother in our heart. Hello, we are classified as a murderer and we shall find our part in the lake of fire. We shall have our part there. And therefore, if you find yourself in a position, I can safely tell you that you are not ready for that journey into eternity. And therefore, you need to do something to get ready. And you can get ready tonight. That's a good thing. You still have a hope as long as there is breath in your body. Because the Bible tells us that today is not the day of condemnation, but today is the day of salvation. You can be saved today. So you don't, even though the Bible reveals it to you tonight, you can do something to change it and be in a better state. Praise God. So if you have, if you hate your brothers in your heart, come on, brothers and sisters, be honest with yourself. If you know you harbor hatred in your heart for your brothers and sisters, you're classified as a murderer and you are not ready. To meet Jesus Christ. You're not ready for eternal life. You're ready for the second death. So you need to get ready. Amen. God, God said you shall have your part in the lake of fire. He also says the war mongers also. I'm trying to let you know. For you to answer the question. Are you ready now? So you look at these things that we've been saying. If you're, if, these, if you're classified in these categories. Then you're not ready. The war mongers. All unclean persons, all unclean persons who indulge themselves in impure lust and fornication, adultery, and all kind of lewdness. If you are involved in these things, you are classified as a warmonger and you shall have your part in the lake of land. Therefore, you are not ready for your journey, but you can get ready. I, keep, I just I got to keep us in this hope that you know there's hope. You can change. You can change. You don't have to remain in that state. Impure lust, because it's not every lust is impure. Enough. If you, you you desire for food, you, you, it's a, lust is a is an is a desire. But when it becomes impure, it's, it's an uncontrollable desire for things that are contrary to God's word and God's requirement of you. It also says the sorcerers, sorcerers shall find themselves in lake of fire. So if you're a saucer, those who is a saucer, those who deals, deals with familiar spirits, necromancers, they're, they're classified as necromancers, and those who use the magic art. You know them, right? Obia people and all those people. Those people are not ready. They shall have their part make of fire. Bible also says idolaters, idolaters. Those that worship devils and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood and and they worship these things as representing God. And not only those things, but even in the church, we practice idolatry so many times unawareingly. I would not even realize this idolatry I'm getting involved in. I've said this to you many times. When you put anything or anybody before it, God, that thing becomes your idol. When you put anybody or anything before you pleasing God, that becomes an idol. And you're, you're practicing idolatry. And we must stop it. Because that, if we continue, we shall have a part in the lake of fire. And the Bible finally says, all liars. All liars, not some. All who are false in their statements. All those who are false in their promises. You make promise and you don't do it. And you know you're not going to do it. You're a liar. And the Bible says, you shall have your part in your fire. So if you are a liar tonight, 
then you know you're not ready. If you have been making promises and you're not fulfilling them, and you know even at the point you're not making a promise, you're not going to do it, you're a liar. And many Christians do these things and don't realize that they are sinning and they're not ready for the rapture. They're not ready for death if they want to in earth eternal life. Those persons who are not faithful to their, their contracts, so you have a contract, you have a deal, and you don't live up to your end, you're a liar. Even in church, we make pledges. I wouldn't live up to it. We are liars. And that's why the Bible said, better you know, make a vow than to make one and, and don't fulfill it. Brothers and sisters, if we find ourselves in that place tonight, we are not ready. But there's hope. We can get ready. We can change. Praise God. Praise God. So, when Bible speaks of all lies, it, in, it refers to all those who are false towards God. You're not real. So you, you, you say you're serving God, but it's not real. It's not from a true heart. You're lying. If you lift your hands in church and say, Lord, I love you, but God knows that is not coming from a true heart. You're lying. You're, you're, you're false towards God. You're, you're, you're doing it, but not right for the right motives. All false, all those are false towards God. You are liars. You are saying things that are not so. And you are doing things that you really and truly is not so. We got to look into these things, brothers and sisters. And not only false towards God, but false towards mankind too. Human beings. So you, 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 tell, you tell me that you are going to do this, or you tell a brother that you are going to do that, and you know you are not going to do it, and you don't do it. And, oh, and you just take it lightly. It's not light, It's not to be taken lightly. Let your yea be yea. What you say, let it be what you will do. We got to do that if we're going to be ready. If we're going to escape the second death. So the question is, can you be identified tonight with any of these things that we just went through? Can you? Are, I can be identified a few of them, some of them. If not possibly not all, but even one or two of them, think about it. But well, let me tell you, even if it's just one, we are still guilty. And we need to change if we're going to be ready. Because what the Bible says in James, James 2, verse 10 to 11, it says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Might as well he never keep none. So if you find yourself guilty of one of these things, might as well you do everything because you'll be you'll be classified, ready for 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 for, for, for hell. But I'd rather you don't do none. I'd rather you change and, and resist and stop doing all of these things and do what is right. Bible in James 2, 10 and 11 says, well, verse 11 says, for he that said, he that, he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now if you, if thou commit adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So even if you don't com commit no adultery, but you, but, but you kill, you still transgress the law. God is saying, God will say you should not commit adultery, says you should not kill also. So if you say, I'm not coming number, I'm not nobody, but you still going to commit adultery. You're still transgressing the law. So you're still a sinner. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I think we have gone far tonight with 825. So we look at the need for grace. So while everyone is guilty of sin and deserving of death, there is hope. There is hope. There's hope in this solution that grace offers. And that is what we're going to talk about the next time we come. So yeah, you see all of these things that we, if you're practicing them, it is telling that you're not ready. But there's hope. Grace provides a solution for all of this. And that's what I want to look at the next time we come. Possibly Sunday evening or whenever it is that we, you'll hear. But we'll pick it up from there. And I'll show you what the, the solution that grace offers to us. So we can make sure that we know that we have eternal life.
It's something that the Bible says we shall know. Read it again, first, first John 5 verse 13. That you will know that you have eternal life. You can know it, but you got to practice what God expects of you. God bless you tonight as we, we give God thanks for this privilege of brought, uh, to come into this Bible study tonight and to have spent time with you in talking about the Word of God. I hope that something was said tonight that will help you to look into yourself and ask a question and be able to answer truly. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you prepared if you should die tonight to meet Jesus Christ? If not, let's use the time wisely we have to repent and to find our place with God so that we'll be ready to meet when he comes again. The Lord bless you tonight. Let us pray. Father, I thank you tonight for your love. I thank you for your mercies. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for this wonderful privilege, God, that you have given to us, Lord, to come and to look into your words. Lord, I pray, God, that the words which went forth tonight will bring a blessing to the hearts of those who listened. And God, it will help them to become the persons you want them to become. That will be ready to meet you, Lord. That, Lord God Almighty, death will not take us in a time of, uh, in a state of unreadiness. Not a rapture will take us in a state of unreadiness, but we'll be ready. For, Lord, we can be. You have given us sufficient grace to make it, God. So help us tonight. We thank you for the hope we have in you, Lord God. And tonight, God, I pray you bless every child of God, every person who will listen to this study tonight. Lord, let this word bring about a revival in our spirits, God, that will seek to become the people you want us to become, that will seek to do that which you want us to do, God, that we live in our, our lives in accordance with your word, that we will not transgress your laws, God Almighty, that we will not violate the principles that you have laid on in the words of God, but we will live by them. God, we might have violated many times, but God, we ask you to forgive us tonight. We repent tonight, God. We ask you to have mercy upon us tonight and save us. Deliver us, O oh God, from this sinful flesh, this sinful carnal propensity that we have as human beings to go against your words and your will. Oh God, deliver us and strengthen us, God. Make us what you want us to be tonight, we pray. We pray, God Almighty, for the church. Lord, that you'll lift up your people. We pray, God, for revival in the hearts of every member of the church, the true church of God Almighty, will experience that revival that will help us to live the way you want us to live, Father. We pray, God Almighty, for the leaders that you have placed in the churches across Jamaica, across the world, that you'll strengthen each and every one, God. Use each and every one for your glory. We pray, God Almighty, for the, our country, Jamaica, Lord. Lord, they see and know everything that's happening amongst us. Lord, the surge in the COVID-19 virus, even those with more and more persons are, are knowing persons who have contracted this virus, persons who have had fellowship with God, persons who have come in contact with daily, and they have now contracted this virus, God. It's coming closer and closer to each and every one of us, God. But Lord, we pray for your divine protection and covering, God. Let it not come, Lord God, in our bodies and our homes, mighty God. I rebuke it. I send it back to the pit of hell. Lord, I pray you'll be a fence around your people, God, and protect us from this virus, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for Jamaica, God, that you'll strengthen us. Lord God, that the people, God, we will become more cognizant and aware of this virus and do the things that is necessary to prevent it from spreading, Lord God. For we can do it, Lord. So help us, Lord. Help those that are, that are going contrary, God, to the protocols, that they'll fall in line, God, for the benefit of themselves and their neighbors and their family members, that God Almighty, that we will see this virus move from amongst us, oh God. Let your will be done, Lord. We pray for our Prime Minister. Lord, give him wisdom, give him knowledge and understanding. Oh God, provide leadership for our country. Lord, above all, as I pray for the salvation of his soul and his family, that he'll save them, God. I pray for the Minister of Health. Dr. Tufton, God, you have given wisdom, Lord. For it's not easy, God, to provide leadership in this pandemic, God. But, Lord, you are well able to strengthen and to empower them to do it, Lord. Bless them, Father. Every minister of government, every member of parliament, every councillor, every mayor across the island, God, who have given themselves to provide public service for the citizens of this country. Bless them, mighty God. Oh, God, save their souls. I pray, mighty Jesus. Bless them. They're going out there, coming in Jesus. I pray, God Almighty, for the peace of God to rest upon Jamaica, the residents of God. Those who are residing here and those who are overseas in that diaspora, God. Bless them, God. Every person under the sound of my voice tonight, 
Bring a special blessing upon their lives and protect us from evil, from dangers and perils. Lord, I pray for the persons, oh God, who will come in contact with daily who are not yet saved. I pray, God, you'll give us a spirit of boldness to tell them about your love and to expound. Lord God, how oh, grace can save them, God, how oh, your grace has been extended towards them. That, that grace which brings salvation, God, that they too might be saved. Lord, help us not to be timid, but to be bold and to go forward. Lord, endure the spirit of boldness, God, that will tell the world that you love them and your cares and they can be saved. Have your way now, Father. Bless the ministry of the first United Pentecostal of Church of Mandeville. Use us for your glory, God, that we'll expound your word and build a kingdom. Lord God, for the souls that are dying around us that we need to reach, help us, God. Bless us tonight, we pray. As we go through this night, God, be with us, keep us safe from evil, from dangers and perils. As we look to you, we say thanks. In and through your great name, Jesus. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. In the mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. If you have listened tonight and you're not yet saved, I would love to would love to pray with you. We'd love to have further discussions with you. You can reach out to us on our church website or via the, the, the our email address at FUPC Mandeville at gmail.com. Our website is www.fupcmandeville.com or you can reach out to us on Facebook, uh, Facebook, FUPC Mandeville on Facebook. You can reach out to us there also. Or you can call us at the church's number at 876-962-3516. We look forward to hearing from you. It's our desire to see you get saved and to walk with God. I would really love to play a part in you realizing that in your life. God bless you all tonight. The peace of God be with you. Remember, stay safe and stay saved. God bless you. In Jesus' name.